Charlie would often tell us that he was Jesus. He would tell us that his name, Man Son, was significant. Man Son. He thought he was the Son of God. One time on acid, Charlie had a crucifixion experience. Charlie would reenact the crucifixion. We were doing acid as well. So when he talked about looking at the nails in his hands and feet, it was very easy to imagine the hands and the feet bleeding. Well, Diane Lake says she was a, quote, naive, lonely, love-starved 14-year-old girl who felt an attraction and deep connection to Charles Manson when she joined what's called his family. Now, at the time, Diane says she never thought the man who oozed self-confidence and sex appeal and convinced her that he was the Messiah would later turn out to be the monster the world knows today. Now, Diane has written about her experience in a book titled Member of the Family, My Story of Charles Manson, which is in bookstores now. You talk about in the book, and so I'll talk about it some now, that Charles Manson raped you, beat you, passed you around to older men for sex. Did you question any of that at the time, or were you so pulled into this that you saw that as your role and your duty? It was my role and it was my duty to do his bidding and it didn't, it, it, it was, it did happen, but it wasn't, I didn't feel that it was frequent at the time. Uh -huh. You talk about your belief that he was the Messiah. Tell me, tell me about that. He was a magic maker. He could postulate, he talked about postulating things. He, he had lots of verses, you know, from the Bible, from Scientology, from very, you know, many dis disciplines. And his, you know, he kept reiterating his name, man, son. We believed it. We came to believe it in a kind of a mind group think. Well, you spoke about it very clearly in the book. You said, quote, there have been many false prophets besides Charlie, but even now, all these years later, I find it hard to explain what it was like to actually believe that he was a kind of Messiah. It's an incredible concept, totally impossible to fathom, that the person you're standing next to or having sex with is somehow related to God. Let's, let's just talk about the first time you became aware of the murders. What was the first time you learned that a murder had taken place? We were getting ready to go up to Death Valley. And so we were in Atlanta. I was with Tex. And I came back uh, to the property, and he had newspapers with the headlines, Tate LaBianca. And he slapped it with his hand, his fist, and said, I, I did this. Charlie told me to. And that was, that's the first time I even knew that those murders exist, ex had existed because I didn't watch television, didn't read newspapers. So it was a double shock. So you, first, you didn't know they had happened, period, let alone that they had anything to do with the family. Correct. Okay, and so this Tex Watson slaps these down and says, I did this, Charlie told me to do this, and I did this. Were you shocked? Totally shocked and scared and didn't know what you know, what to do. Tell me about Leslie Van Houten. She comes to you shortly after with regard to the other murders, correct? Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, we, were, we were out, we were hiding in the desert, and one night she told me, along with Susan Atkins what, and Patty Krenwinkel, what their uh, what they had experienced, what they had done. And it was kind of, what struck me was that it was kind of gleeful. I mean, it was like, again, they were, you know, kind of proud of what they had done. 